Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues This is Session 10, Part 1 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance, where Jesus and Mary continue to discuss God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, still focusing on the human conscience, explaining the personal fundamental desires that must be developed by the individual which influence and control the operation of the conscience. The session was recorded on the 9th of January 2018 from 10.30 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Welcome back, everyone. We're at session 10 of a discussion that I'm having with Jesus about <laughs> the <laughs> principles of forgiveness and repentance. And as if you've been following along so far, which I hope you have, and if you haven't, please go back and watch the series from the beginning because we are covering a lot of ground, mm. all in all to give context to a very specific discussion that we want to have where we address the, our viewers' questions and comments about forgiveness and repentance. Mm. And so um, what we're doing is laying a lot of groundwork and we're up to this point in our discussion, which is we're discussing the conscience, the human conscience. And um, today we're going to focus on the specific attitudes and um, desires within an individual that need to be developed um, and how that impacts upon our sensitivity to the conscience. So if we're not sensitive, if we don't have certain desires, we're never going to be sensitive to our conscience or the conscience. Mm. Yeah. So as you said, this is session 10, and it's likely now that it's going to be more like sessions 15, 16 and 17 by the time we get to explain to people the answers to their questions. Yes. But uh, we're hopeful that the next three or four sessions will finish off the issue with the conscience. We've got then we've got one more issue after that to address, and then we'll get on to addressing their questions. Yeah. <laughs> So thank you for everybody for your patience about how long this is taking. But, uh, you know, in a lot of ways, this is very important information that we would like to explain in more detail later on. Mm -hmm. So we're looking forward to sort of using this particular discussion as the, if, if you like, the introduction to further discussions about the conscience, compensation, forgiveness and repentance, and a number of other subjects that we've already covered. So. So we're looking forward to those discussions, but hopefully people can get a bit of a rounded view at this stage as to what we're wanting to discuss with them regarding forgiveness and repentance, and also see the different influences on, on forgiveness and repentance, yeah. our, our being able to even engage the process of forgiveness and repentance depends upon a number of different influences. Yeah, yeah. and to be aware of when we need to forgive and when we need to forgive to repent yes yeah. yes so that's uh, where we're at with this uh, introduction to this session session 10 this one yes. is <laughs> as a reminder and uh, we look forward to discussing this particular subject with you today because again it's a very interesting part of mm -hmm. the discussion about the conscience yes well, we'd like to review what uh, we've already covered up to now in our forgiveness and repentance series of discussions and uh, we're at this stage, we have discussions, we've discussed session one through to session nine. And we need to look at, just as a quick review, what we've already discussed to, to remind you, the viewers, to, if you haven't looked at that material, to go back and look at it before you engage this particular discussion we're going to have now. Because if you don't, you probably won't understand much of what we're talking about <laughs> today. But remember, back in the first to the third sessions, we covered the issues of God's laws generally. God's truth and how we can determine God's truth on any subject. And then we started looking more specifically at God's truth about forgiveness and repentance and, and the processes of the emotional processes of forgiveness and repentance. Yeah. We examined things like law and accidents and you know, yes. things like that as well. So there were quite a lot of very various subjects we analyzed in the first three sessions. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Then in sessions four through to eight, we began to look at um, some of the things that God has in place to help us to get to a place where we're desiring to forgive and repent. So we introduced um, compensation, uh, principles surrounding the laws that govern compensation. And we talked about um, 
what compensation is like after the death of the physical body as opposed to when we're here on earth. We also talked about um, feelings and emotions about sin and desiring personal truth. And we talked about some examples of compensation. So we talked about sowing what you reap and we talked about three different ways that we could understand or um, begin to conceptualize how compensation happens. So we talked about uh, sowing and reaping in kind and a, a number of other things. What were the other things? Do you remember, Jesus, that we talked about yeah, there? Yeah, commensurate or in proportion to, right. to the sowing. And then trying to reap when you haven't sown anything at all. So it's about reaping what you sow, not sowing what you reap. But <laughs> Did <laughs> I say it's sowing easy what for you us reap. to get yeah. that all mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> Too much reaping and sowing. <laughs> yep. So that went on for, I think, three sessions. We covered those we, that material. We did. We? we did. But in total, we spent four talking all about the laws of compensation and the effects. We sort of finished off that by talking about the effects of the laws of compensation in forgiveness and repentance. Hmm. Then we got to session nine when we introduced the human conscience, which was our last session. And uh, I think most people would have felt that that's pretty interesting material mm -hmm. that they haven't heard much of before. Mm -hmm. And I know we've, uh, as we said then, we talked about it privately with different people, but most people we've never talked about it with publicly. Mm -hmm. And uh, this whole concept that God is able to share truth with us via the soul through a connection that God has, you know, some level of influence over, obviously. Yes. But also he, he built this particular connection in our soul, just similar to the, it's similar to the connection of the, to the Holy Spirit that we have mm -hmm. um, in that in a, it's a potential connection yes. uh, or a connection that's always there, ready to be utilized or used. And, and there's a few differences we talk about, too, between the connection between God's love mm -hmm. and then the connection between God's truth and our soul. And so we compared some of those facts about the human conscience and how it works. And obviously, we've got to spend a lot more time <laughs> uh, looking at some more details about the human conscience because there's a lot more that we need to discuss yeah. about it, which is the reason why we'll have our next sessions uh, yes. all still about the human conscience, the conscience for another few sessions yet. Yes, because I feel that what we introduced in the last session, it's quite, um, as you said, it hasn't been spoken about much in public by us. And the conscience is something that's not well understood on earth. There's a no. lot of theories about it. Yeah. Um, but given what we introduced last session, there's a lot of questions that must arise from the truth that we, that we um, kind of explained. And so... As you said, the next few sessions, we're going to be talking about that. Mm, um, mm. But today we're going to, in session 10, we're going to talk about um, some of the fundamental desires. So by that, we mean like um, underlying or primary desires that must be developed within an individual um, that, that obviously dictate other desires later on <laughs> um, and how they how they impact on how sensitive we are to the conscience and how in tune we are with it. And how they all also control the operation of the conscience. Yes. Um, remember that the conscience is an inbuilt soul-based function and it is under our control, but there are certain fa factors that influence the control, the, the level of control, firstly, that we have over it, mm -hmm. but also the level of control that other things, external factors have over it as well. Yeah which yeah. we'll talk about in another session, That's which we hope to tomorrow. begin tomorrow. Yeah. So, so yeah, the, so we're now up to this session 10 and we'll proceed with this discussion <laughs> so, of so, personal fundamental <laughs> desires that we need to examine. <laughs> yes, and that, it was good that you raised that about tomorrow because it's like today we're focusing on what is inside of us and what we can do about and how what we do affects the operation of the conscience. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow we'll talk about things outside of us that, that can also can influence also, what we do. Yes. And if that affects the uh, operation of the conscience. Of the conscience yeah. Yeah. Mm. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> Review of how the conscience operates and motivates humans. So last session we introduced this topic, didn't we? And um, we'll just give a quick review for our listeners of the, doc, the bullet points from that presentation. Mm, yeah, yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, obviously... We first seen that there's many benefits for having a fully functioning sensitive conscience. <laughs> so 
we examined some of those benefits so that people could see the, the point of it. And the real point of it is this beautiful thing that God's done with us, with the, with the soul, and that is give us, no matter what our condition, give us the potential of receiving God's truth about any subject at any time, d depending on the, the developed condition of the conscience. Mm -hmm. So this means that every single human who's ever lived and who still lives on earth or in the spirit world has the ability to receive truth directly from God. And, and we talked about this concept of how you know, God's like a parent who wants to communicate truth to his children mm. and therefore provided a mechanism through which truth could be communicated even when love is not available or, or is not desired by the child. Mm. So he's still trying to educate us yeah. as, as his children and the method, his primary method of direct education is the conscience. Mm. There are many indirect methods of education of our soul, but the primary methods of direct communication with our soul are the reception of God's love and the reception of God's truth. Mm. The reception of God's love through the Holy Spirit connection into our soul and the reception of God's truth through the conscience. And they are the two primary methods that God has a direct individual uh, uh, ability to influence and direct and give us um, information that will benefit yeah. our lives. Yeah. And we noted that because this is a communication of truth, it's not, the conscience doesn't make us feel anything. It's not God trying to have us have a certain emotion. God just wants us to know truth. Sometimes yes. yeah. we have an emotional response to that truth, but that is not the operation of the conscience. The conscience's operation just communicate truth, and any response we have emotionally to that truth is our own. That being said, though, there is also this other side effect of it, isn't there, of the fact that God communicates through emotion. That's right. And so therefore you could say the conscience expresses God's emotion about the truth about things. Yes. Not your emotion about yeah. the truth about things. <laughs> so, um, and this is uh, like, there's a big difference between those two things. We, we've talked about that a bit already. And of course, there's a lot more we could say about that. But it's important for our listeners to bear in mind that, that God shares this truth through the soul-based connection. So it is an emotional connection. Um, but if it, if it triggers emotion in us, if it, may, if it causes us to feel emotion, mm -hmm. then that's our emotion. You yes. know, that's our response to God's truth or God's emotion about things. Yeah. yeah. So that's very important, isn't it? Mm. God's got an emotion uh, which, which is um, conveyed to us. It's emotional truth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but it's not an attempt by God to make us feel the same way or no. feel any particular thing. Yes. It's just an emotional communication of truth. And then we do often have our own emotions in response. Yeah, you could say it's sort of like God saying, here's how I feel about this. What you do with that is up to you. Yes. But here's how I feel about it. Yeah. <laughs> Very responsible parenting. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Another major point we talked about is that we can desensitize ourselves from the conscience. Using which... many, many different types of techniques. And uh, today we're going to see how we can sort of tune in more to our conscience using some tools that we have at our disposal. And tomorrow we're going to see how we can tune out of our conscience <laughs> <laughs> with a lot of external things that we, or, and internal things that go on inside of our soul. So, we're starting to examine in more detail these techniques that yeah. we actually have to zone in or zone out of yeah. our conscience. Because it's fairly obvious that most people uh, don't have God's understanding of truth on most issues. No. If they did, there'd be far more consensus on the earth. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and and far, le far more peace too. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Um, we've said that the conscience enables us to hear God's truth about any matter. and Yeah, and we talked about this also being God's truth on any matter, not just matters yes. about our fear, yeah. ourselves or, you know, our life. And most people still have a degree of narcissism where they're sort of focused only on their life. But, but here we're talking about also the external truth. God has the ability through the conscience to share with us about external truth, truth that we can hear about from God and then experiment with. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, eventually it becomes a fact for us because we've experimented with it enough. We've done it enough. 
to see that it is a truth then. Yeah. So initially it's just information and then we go through this experimental, exper experimental process, mm -hmm. uh, which, which is a, also an experience that finishes up telling us what is true. So that, you could say that's a bit like, you know, years and years ago, before anybody got into an aeroplane and flew, it, it was thought to be impossible that any person could fly using machine. And once an aeroplane has been designed and you actually see it flying, now you know it to be true. And, yeah. and this is the kind of thing. God is sharing us the concepts of truth, mm -hmm. but you don't know it to be true yet until you've actually engaged the experience. So, so th this is the whole goal of the, the communication that God has via the conscience, to share the truth with us. Yeah. And then this, we've got the decision to make. <laughs> yeah. Do we want to do something about this truth or, or not? not. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then we talked about the fact that we can receive information from spirits, from other people, um, and these things aren't to be confused with the conscience. Correct. Yeah. Yes. And if you think about it too, there's a lot of times when we've been, if you like, guilted or shamed into specific belief systems emotionally. And that should also not be confused with the conscience. Yes. So the conscience is just the sharing of God's truth about a specific subject. Now, that subject can be personal or universal. It mm -hmm. doesn't really matter. But God's just sharing the truth about that subject with us. Yeah. What happens emotionally, as we have always said, it comes from ourselves. Mm -hmm. Now, there are times when spirits try to share things with us too. Of course, it's never always truth. It's yes. only a version or their version of truth. And a lot of times it can also be lies. Mm -hmm. and, and the same applies with people on earth. People influence in different ways and sometimes they can influence us with their lies. And um, that's not to be confused with the conscience either. And a parent can influence a child with lies to such an extent that the child has a lot of guilt and shame. Mm. That's not to be confused with the conscience either. Yes. We need to understand the conscience is God's direct method of communication to the human soul, not, not any other method. It, it, all the other methods are due to other things going on for the human soul. Yeah. And we need to understand that. Yeah. So now, okay. given, I suppose, all of these facts, we're, we're getting down now to this discussion of how we are, know sort of we are listening to God's communication of truth via the conscience rather than just listening to the indications or manipulations or, or influence of others. Mm -hmm. And how do we know that we, and how do we actually develop this, uh, this sensitivity to the conscience? How do we get to the stage where we understand the factors that affect Yes. How this conscience operates and, and how do we develop this conscience to such an extent that we know when it's in operation in comparison to all the other things that could be operating at the same time within the soul, because the soul's a very complex creature. Yep. And and that's where really where we're getting to in today's discussion. Yes. Hmm. Summary of factors affecting sensitivity to conscience. So <laughs> Given everything that we've talked about so far, you've established in our previous discussion that the conscience exists and is a direct communication with God for every person. Hmm. So this begs the question then, if it exists for every person, it's always uh, communicating God's feelings of truth about things. Mm -hmm. Why then doesn't everyone on the earth either have the same opinion about mm. things, mm. or at least know what God's opinion is and say, I beg to differ? Mm. No, it's a very good question, isn't it? Because it, it makes sense that if God's communicating truth via a mechanism in the soul, and if everybody, obviously, there's a lot of ifs here, if yes. everybody was in tune with that mechanism, and if everybody was listening to that mechanism, and if everybody was acting on the mechanism... <laughs> then, of course, we would all have the same opinions of truth on the same issue mm -hmm. if we have asked for that truth from God via the mechanism of the soul, mm -hmm. of, the, of the conscience through the soul. So, so, in other words, God's not going to share truth that we have not asked for, right? Most of the time we, we need to ask for it, and this is part of what we'll just talk about today. 
But but let's say we have asked for it and 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 somebody else has asked for it and we both receive different information, mm -hmm. then we need to know what's going on there. Why are we receiving different information? Does that mean God's, uh, you know, got one idea for one person and one idea for another? Yeah. Uh, obviously, that wouldn't be very fair or equal yeah. if that was the case. But there's also these issues, okay, if we've all got this conscience and it's all working good, like if, as it's mm. designed to, and um, then surely we would all be in the same state on issues of love. It doesn't mean that we would be in the same state in terms of our desires, mm -hmm. in terms of what we choose to do in our life and the things that we enjoy in our life and all of those kind of things, because that's all very personal things that we need to engage. But, but it does mean that if we were all in tune with, with the conscience properly and we were all of the same developed condition when it came to the conscience, then it does mean, obviously, that everyone would believe the same thing on the same issues, spiritual, emotional, physical, scientific issues, would all have the same answer. And uh, so obviously, the fact mm. that we don't get all the same answers, yeah. there's got to be something going on. Yes. And to clarify, you mentioned there about the significance of asking. Mm -hmm. Now, this is something that I'm not entirely clear about. Um, I think in our last discussion, we talked a bit about God is communicating this truth almost whether we like it or not. Um, mm -hmm. There's just. Well, it's the same as God's sharing God's love whether we like it or not, <laughs> isn't it? Yep. It's the same principle. So you're saying, um, so for example, I know that unless I'm longing for God's love, God's love does not enter me. That's right. So are you saying it's exactly the same in terms of a sense of longing? Yes, because but, but the longing has to come from the soul, not from the mind. And this is where most people, when we talk about longing, get very confused. They think that most people think that if you have a thought about something, then it means you're longing for something. Yeah. So if I have a thought that I'd really like to know God's truth, that means I'm really longing for God's truth. No, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Longing comes from an emotional state within the soul. It has to be an openness that begins in the soul. So, so there has to be inside of a person to receive new truth on a subject that you don't know anything about at this point. There has to be at some point inside of you a desire for that truth to, to be felt, to be found and to be felt. Now, now, most of us don't know what our desires are. Sometimes we're pretty hit and miss with our desires. So sometimes we have a longing when we don't even know and we get some truth in those moments. And we think, how did that truth come to me? Wow, that was a wonderful moment, but I don't know how that happened. <laughs> <laughs> and in the, same, in the same way that many receive God's love in a similar way, you know, they receive God's love due to something else that was going on in their life and their soul had a longing that they weren't consciously necessarily sort aware of. Intellectually of. aware intellectually of. Intellectually aware of is yeah. probably a better way of term because yeah. the soul obviously is aware yeah. that it has, it has this longing. But uh, intellectually, they might not be that aware of it. Mm -hmm. They're also not intellectually aware when they have an intellectual thought, but it doesn't translate to a longing. Mm. There's no understanding as to why that happens. Now, we've talked at length over tens of years now, decades, mm about why that happens. But most, I feel, still don't really understand that. It's about getting your facade out of the way yes. and your addictions out of the way and seeing what's really going on inside of your feeling state, inside of your soul. And the same applies with the operation of the constant conscience. You need to get your garbage out of the way mm -hmm. so that you can now be open to having a desire for truth on specific subjects. Mm. Now, of course, also, we can't desire truth on subjects we know nothing about. So what I mean by that is, it's very, very hard for us to, to know anything about something we don't know. We don't even know what we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we, we've got no idea of all the things, all the areas of discovery that we could be discovering. Yes. We only know what we've been educated about up till now. Yes. So for the majority of people, we have a limited amount of education and, and we are, we've lost the inquisitive nature of the child due to diff different suppressional techniques that have happened during our childhood. Mm -hmm. And this has now stopped us from 
understanding how we can long for more information. Mm -hmm. Most of us, in fact, have a deep fear of new information now as adults because of childhood injuries, which we'll talk about later tomorrow or the next session. And, and these all have a part to play in how the conscience operates. And that's why, you know, that's why not everybody sees or hears or knows or listens to or acts upon the same information, even though God is transmitting the same information to each soul or attempting to transmit the same information to each soul. Okay, because um, frankly, sometimes I think I don't want the truth about things. <laughs> And yet mm. I feel, oh, look, I know that's wrong. Or, oh, look, I know that's right. Or, oh, look, you know. But now I you're don't... comparing one of the 14's souls with the average person's soul. Okay. Now, the 14 certainly have truth in built in their soul because they've experienced it for thousands of years. And so now, yes, the 14 so... are in a state where they do know what the truth is inside of themselves and don't need the connection with God you know, they needed the connection with God to discover it and engage yes. it, but but now it's there. And, and no matter yeah. how much they try to suppress it, yes. <laughs> it's never going to go away. So so if that's what it's like for all the fourteen, that's what it's like for me. But for for people who are in their first incarnation, which is the majority of people, all the people on the planet pretty much, and all the people in the spirit world up until the 36th dimension, those people are all going through this experiment. Exper experiment. Mm -hmm. This experiential mm -hmm. process of having to first open their mind to the concept of what might be available to ask and then desire to ask about it yes, and then receive it yeah. and then desire or not to do something about it. Uh -huh. And that is the operation of the conscience. Yes. And so you're saying that if someone feels kind of bothered about something, it's not necessarily the result of the conscience operating it may be the result of some education that re they've heard or received in the past that is niggling at them or it may be the result of some parental shame or guilt that's been put on them that's got nothing to do with the conscience yes and this is why we have to have these discussions yes. about what is going on for the average person you know in terms of the average person saying oh my conscience bothered me about this interesting thought but your conscience actually doesn't bother you <laughs> you know what i mean that that's not technically correct um, yes. to say that your conscience bothers you because you, your conscience can't bother you like in the sense of emotionally bother you your emotions are the response to truth being received by the conscience <laughs> which yeah. is a different process altogether yes. than being bothered by the conscience yeah and, and there's things like that that we need to just straighten out so that people get the right concept and, and hopefully over the next three weeks, the three sessions or so, we'll be able to straighten out a lot of these kind of questions. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's, <laughs> let's get on with it then, hey? <laughs> um, so basically, as you've just introduced to us, there's a lot of factors that affect our willingness and our ability to actually hear the conscience, what it's saying. Yes. Yes. So today, what we're going to do is focus on this issue that I've introduced before, the fundamental desires that have to be developed by each individual um, in order for them to uh, hear the conscience well, and they not, influence that, and control yeah, that's um, important the words. operation of the conscience. Yes, so the conscience is a, is a soul-based function and we need to know what controls and influences it yes in order for us to be able to use it appropriately yes and and basically what we're saying in this session is there are six main things that control and influence the function of the conscience that mm -hmm. we can do something about through desire you know mm -hmm. we can we can develop these things yes and in our session tomorrow it's a completely different discussion yeah yeah and because okay. because it's a, it's a discussion tomorrow is about the, the a number of things, I think it's five things, five primary things, and there's obviously more that affect, that are external factors that influence yes. the functioning of the conscience or or more importantly, don't so much influence the functioning of it, but influence our desire to respond to it and our desire to do something about it and our desire to listen to it. Yeah. And, and we need to know what they are as well. Yes. So it's important right. to make the separation. 
Cool. All right. So let, I'll just list off the six different things we're going to look at today. Today. Yeah. So that is my fundamental desires, my desire to be loving. So that there we're using the God's definition of love. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so mm-hmm. that's not wanting or needing for myself. It's not a selfish thing. Um, but res- rather, it's like wanting to give love to other people. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Second, desire for God's truth. And again, that's not just my truth, uh, adhering to that. Mm-hmm. We're, we're wanting God's truth, universal truth on matters. The absolute truth. Yes. Yep. Um, desire to be humble, which, as we've explained many times, is the desire to be humble to what I feel, to my emotions. But humility also involves a willingness to be open to new ideas, um, concepts, beliefs, changing my current ideas, concepts and beliefs. Yes. It's it's really about not being attached to your current beliefs in a lot of ways, isn't it? Emotionally attached to them. Yes. We'll talk about that today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good. Uh, Desire for faith. Um, So that's about believing that something better is possible in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Um, desire for morality, and here we mean God's morality, and That's we'll right. explain what morality and that what that is, because yeah. it really is God's morality, yeah. and a desire for personal ethics. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So when we contrast our session today with our session tomorrow, and remember our session tomorrow or our next session is all about this concept of the external factors that influence the development and the desire to develop our conscience. Mm-hmm. And, and in that area, we're looking at things like early childhood experiences and, their imp- and the impact of parenting and our upbringing upon our conscience and how how those factors influence our conscience. Yes. We're looking at the um, infiltration of familial emotions and belief systems in our conscience. And by that, we mean how family-based concepts and beliefs have got into our soul even when we were not looking, even yeah. when we were unaware. So we'll look at that yeah. and, and how those particular belief systems and emotions have influenced the development of our conscience. We then also examine the bigger picture of the society because obviously society to a fair degree influences family. And so we now we look at the society belief systems and emotions yes. and see how how they've entered us through through a process which is a soul based process. And it might not have been through any decisions we've made of our own. And those particular things have entered us and then controlled how we use our conscience or desire to use our conscience. Mm-hmm. We've also, we also tomorrow look at this, the, la- the problem with the lack of education about the conscience. So, you know, obviously most people on the planet know very little or nothing about mm-hmm. the conscience. And the problem with that is that that means most of us have a terrible lack of education. Mm-hmm. When, you ha- when you lack education on a specific subject, it means you can't utilise the tools available to you from knowing more about the subject. Yeah. And so that that has obviously a large detrimental effect on our ability to listen to and uh, act upon our conscience. And then there's this developed personal emotional condition. So what we're talking about there is is the things like the different emotions like anger, rage, resentment and all these other types of emotions that all have come from somewhere, superiority, inferiority. Yeah. These, uh, these are emotions that all come from somewhere yeah. and they do all have an impact on the operation of our conscience. So they are, ex- again, external things that are now part of us, they're now internal, mm-hmm. and uh, they certainly do have an effect on the operation of our conscience. So, so tomorrow's discussion is about these external influences and the damage that have basically caused to our soul-based functions. Yeah. And our, because our conscience is a soul-based function, yes. it's obviously damaged the operation of the conscience. Mm-hmm. Then we, and today we're looking at, okay, what personal things inside of us, personal desires in particular, do we need to develop if we're going to have a fully functioning conscience? And that is really immaterial to damage. That is really, you know, it doesn't matter how much damage or how little damage we have. Today's discussion really focuses our attention on whether you've got no damage at all or some damage or lots of damage, you can still develop and become more sensitive to your conscience as long as you engage some these six primary things. So that's... You need to develop those desires and no matter where you're at right now, you can begin to develop them. Yes. Yeah. So that's what we'll be discussing today. <laughs> yeah. Great.
personal fundamental desires control the operation of the conscience. <laughs> so here we want to start to talk about the fact that um, given that we all have free will, God's given us free will, each of us has the capacity and the ability to have an influence on others mm. through thoughts and behavior and actions. Um, in many different ways, we are constantly influencing others and others are constantly influencing us, aren't they? Yes, like I, I hear today, you know, when people, you know, people talk, you know, we obviously have a lot of spiritual discussions with people and people often talk about the bad thing about being influenced. Mm. And, and I don't see it myself. Like, I don't feel it's a bad thing to be influenced. Um, it depends how you're being influenced as to whether it's a bad thing or not. Yeah. And in fact, uh, most people don't realise, but if we weren't all influenced in some way, all of us would never discover more truth. So, mm. so there has to be some external influences in order for us to discover things. Yeah. And so I feel external influence is a good thing, or, or, or more correctly stated, it, it can be a good thing. Yes. It just depends upon who's influencing me and what their intentions are and so forth. Now, with regard to the conscience, we're saying God is influencing us in some way yeah. by giving us information. Mm -hmm. Now, I feel the information that comes from God is very, very trustworthy, given the fact that he's the absolute, you know, <laughs> he has the absolute truth of the universe at his fingertips. Yes. He's the one who designed the universe, therefore he knows everything about it. It would make sense to me mm. <laughs> to allow myself to be influenced by God to the maximum amount I possibly can. Now, that doesn't always apply to humans, of course. Now, mm. with people influencing me, well, it depends on their intentions and their motivations and their underlying condition and, and all of the other factors that may come into play when it comes to human influence. Mm. But here we're talking about, like, the, by giving us this gift of free will, God's basically said, right, I'm also giving you the gift of being influenced or influencing others. Yes. And either thing isn't a bad thing. No. It just depends on how we use it. It's a, it's a bit like being given the gift of a knife <laughs> and then saying, you know, how are you going to use it? Yeah. Well, it's great for chopping my veggies and, and yes. great for cutting up my, up my fruit. And, yeah. you know, it's great for a lot of things, but it's not, it's not very good if you're going to use it to stab somebody. Yeah. And it's very similar, you could say, with this gift of free will. We can, yeah. we can use it in a way that's loving or unloving. And, yeah. and so the same applies to any information where we're being influenced by anybody. Yeah. How we use it, how we respond to it is going to be the key. You're talking about responding to the influence there. Yes. yes. How we respond to the influence yes. is the key. Yeah. Now, you could say God's influencing us through the operation of the conscience. He's also influencing us through the operation of law. Yeah. He's also influencing us through the, through the fact that there's other things in the universe that are responding to his laws that have an effect on us. Yeah. People are also influencing us through their thoughts, their words, their actions, their emotions, their feelings. Mm -hmm. Everyone's influencing everybody in some yeah. way. Yeah. It just depends on how we do it. To well, think of influence as a negative thing is... It's not really an accurate reflection of the truth of the matter. Yes. Mm. In fact, we, when we seek education or anything, we're seeking influence of some kind. So, but what we're getting to here is to say that we can choose to make the conscience, God's influence, our primary influence in our life. We can. Yeah. yeah. And, um, but in order to do that, <laughs> we must develop some fundamental desires within ourselves yes. um, but in order for us to literally sort of hear or feel the conscience. Yes, because yeah. it's quite obvious when you look at the world today mm -hmm. that even though every person has been built with a conscience, uh, it's a part of our internal design of the soul, if you like, yeah. even though all of us have one, very few of us use it very well or even understand it or even know how to listen to it. So, yeah. so that, that is an indication that there must be problems with our education about <laughs> yes. the conscience itself. Yes. Mm. All right. So just quickly, some of those desires that we want to educate people about that they can actually begin to develop. Um, 
uh, let's just mention them again very quickly. Yes. Yeah, so, so the very first, the desire for love. Yep. That is going to have a huge impact. And to love others, not yes. just have people love me. That's right. Second desire for truth, yep. absolute truth. Yep. So this is desiring God's truth, not your own stuff. Yeah. <laughs> God's truth. <laughs> Third, desire to be humble. Yes, this is about being emo letting yourself feel your emotions, whether they're painful or pleasurable, and also being open to new beliefs and new opinions and new ideas and new concepts. Yes. Number four, desire for faith. So this is about looking forward into the future and going, I really think that there is a positive future ahead of me <laughs> if I engage a lot of these, you know, these things that are going to help me have that positive future. Yep. In other words, having a, a conviction internally that doing something now will result in good things later. Yeah, mm. yeah. Uh, desire for God's morality, and a... yeah. So this is what this is about: seeing that God has morality and humans' morality, not the same as God's morality. <laughs> well, I think it's an oxymoron. <laughs> yeah. Humans' morality yeah, exactly. It's not even real. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but we need to f find out and learn about it and uh, understand it and also engage that. Yes. Yep. And the sixth one we're going to discuss today is desire for ethics. Yes. So here we're talking about the equal treatment of each other. The, the desire, me saying, I am going to do to you what I would like you to do to me. Not what you did do to me, yeah. but what I would like you to yeah. do to me. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Desire to love affects sensitivity to and operation of the conscience. How will desire to love, that is my desire to love God, to love others and the environment, affect how in tune I am with the conscience mechanism? Yeah, well, obviously God's entire universe has been developed around God's love. So everything in the universe, <clears throat> God's laws, God's principles are all governed by God's love. God's truth is all created because of God's love. Mm -hmm. and, and everything that God has ever done is all a, an operation of God's love. So, so this tells us now, well, if everything in the universe that I can learn about that's going to be beneficial to me is, is about God's love, then obviously the more in tune I can get with God's love, the more sensitive I'm going to be to the mechanism of the conscience, which mm -hmm. is God sharing truth about love to mm -hmm. me. So, so the conscience, if I can say that again, is God sharing truth about love to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so if I am more sensitive to God's love, now I can be more sensitive to the operation of my conscience and the mechanism of the conscience. Now, there's two factors to the, the statement you made, though. One is the sensitivity to, and the other part of the statement is the obedience to. Mm. Now, we can be sensitive to something. In other words, we can hear it. We can, we're open enough to hear it, but we can also at the same time not obey it. Mm. So, so there are obviously factors about love that will cause me to obey the truth that I receive. Mm -hmm. If I have love in me, the desire to love in me, mm -hmm. obviously I will desire to obey principles that will lead to more love. I will do something about them, I'll act upon them. Mm -hmm. So obviously that if I, if I have this strong desire to love, and here we're not saying, we'll talk more about the fact we're not saying, you know, desire to be loved. Yep. Here we're talking about the desire to love. If I have a strong desire to love, I will naturally also have a very strong desire to learn about what love would do. Yes. Which is the listening part, the sensitivity part. Yes. And on top of that, I would have a strong desire to actually do it, yep. which is about the obedience part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and this is why we need to examine both of those matters in the subject of, of love. Yeah, mm. yeah. So just to clarify, you said, um, obviously, if I'm more open to God's love, then I'll be more open to hearing the truth from God about love. Mm. But it seems like I could get into it. It's a bit tricky when I don't really understand God's definition of love starting out. Are you saying, so how can I sort of be open to that in order to be open to the truth about love that God's going to give me through the conscience? What's going to help me with that? predicament 
Well, obviously, we've all anyone who's listening to what we've already shared mm -hmm. knows that they can receive God's love. Mm -hmm. Now, if I develop a desire to receive God's love that comes from a sincere, sincerely from my heart, a longing from my heart, I will receive some. Mm -hmm. In the process of receiving some, now what will I do? Will I act upon the love I've received? Mm -hmm. Or will I just go around doing what I used to do? Mm -hmm. Now, that is a personal decision. I, I can choose to ignore the love I've received and not act upon it. Mm -hmm. right? But if I have received some of the love, that naturally will automatically make me more open to the mechanism of the conscience. Absolutely. Because I am now in more harmony with listening to God's truth about the love I've received. Mm hmm Therefore, I am able to listen more carefully to the mechanism of the conscience and I'm, I can hear more from it as yep. a result. However, mm. I don't have to act on the love yep. that I've received, yep. just like I don't have to act on the truth I receive. If you don't act on the love you receive, you will not receive more love. However, if you don't act upon the truth you receive, mm -hmm. you will receive more truth. Because you're more sensitive to the operation of the conscience from having received. From the received. love you've already received. It's yes. opened up the mechanism yes. of the conscience further and you will receive more truth. So that's an interesting fact. It is. That we can be in a state where we receive some of God's love, mm -hmm. actually decided to not act upon it. Yes. But continually receiving more of God's truth because I'm more open to receiving it because I've received some of God's love. Yeah. This means now that my desire to not act upon the love will be constantly getting confronted by the fact that I'm now receiving more truth about the love. <laughs> yeah. So it's very hard for me then to stay in this state where I don't act upon the love, which is a good thing, right? Because mm -hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, acting upon the love is what brings happiness. It's what brings positive results to my life and the souls of others as well. So, so God's made this mechanism, this relationship, if you like, between truth and love in such a way that receiving some truth about love yep. means that I'm more open to having a longing to receive love. Mm -hmm. And then I re when I do receive love, yep. I now have a more openness to receiving the truth through the conscience. Yep. And so uh, they work in hand in hand with each other to help me to continue my development. Yes, which is wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. Now, for our listeners who are saying, yeah, but I haven't received any of God's love, should I just skip this point? Um, what would you say to that? Well, do you want to love others is the, my, is the real question here. Mm -hmm. If you wish to love others, then obviously, and you have a strong desire to do that, like yep. to take action on that, yeah. then obviously you'll be very, very open to knowing how to love others. And therefore God can share with you, even though you may not have received God's love, yep. God can at least share with you how to love others, how, what things you can do to love others. If you're open to receiving that, if you have a strong desire to love others, that's what you'll receive, this yes. information yes. about how to do it. Excellent. And, and this happens very, very frequently where people receive the information about how to do it, and then it is still a choice. Do I yes. want to do it or am I going to just ignore it and and not be done. Yes. What, 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 that is a personal decision and there's nothing God does about that because that's the gift of our will. <laughs> we're allowed to choose what we're going to do with the truth. Mm. But you're saying, if because we, we're talking here about sensitivity and obedience to the conscience, Yes. Um, you're saying, if I really have a strong desire to love others, then I will be more sensitive to what God tells me about love and I will be likely to obey what God tells me about love because I have that strong desire. Exactly. Yeah. So, so the desire for love, and here we're talking about not for love for me, but the desire for me to love to others. Love, yeah. The desire to love others um, is going to have a very, very large impact on my ability to listen to my conscience. conscience. Yeah. And when I say my conscience, remember, while the mechanism is mine, yep. Yeah. It's God sharing truth through the operation of the conscience. Mm -hmm. So my, while my conscience is mine, mm -hmm. the truth that comes via it is God's. Yes. And, and we need to understand that God has that ability to share that truth with us 
if I have a stronger desire to love. Yeah. So the stronger my desire to love is, the stronger my ability to listen to my conscience is. Yeah. The less of a desire to love I have, the less of ability I have to listen to my conscience. Mm -hmm. So there's a co direct correlation, proportionate correlation between my desire to love yep. and the ability to receive information of truth from God. From God. Mm. Excellent. All right, let's just have a little look at our notes since you've covered a lot of what we um, had written here. Sure. Um, yep. I think it's good to probably read each one of these out because it because I think each are have important information in them. Sure. So if we so do that. If I go ahead and read them and you mm. can respond. So when I have a sincere desire to love, I desire to receive God's love so that I can love like God loves. I don't just want to receive God's love so I feel good or my pain ends. Yeah, yeah. now this is a very important thing to love how God loves. Mm. Like God is a very generous lover you know? <laughs> yeah. god, god is generous to all, all of his all of his children and generous beyond our imagination actually now if if we have a desire to love we will actually in the end have this very strong spirit of generosity that comes from the heart mm. so much so you know that we, god's done a whole heap of things for humanity that humanity has yet to even discover even the most developed of humanity is yet to discover all the things God has done to love us. Mm -hmm. Now, if we are similar, you can see that if we love the way God loves, yes. we won't make a big fanfare and a big song and dance about everything that we do for everybody. And what, you know, mm -hmm. none of that would be involved in this process of loving how God loves. And, and so when we desire to love, we desire to love how God loves. And when we desire to love how God loves, our conscience is now more in tune with the ability to receive information about how God loves. Yes. So, so it's a growing thing that happens. Yep. But, but this, it's a very important point to understand that how God loves is very, very different to how humans love. Mm, mm. Okay. When I have a sincere desire to love, I desire to know what love is how love feels and how love can be shared. Yes, now I feel for a lot of people, they think they know what love is. Yeah. But when it comes to um, understanding how love feels, mm. most people are very detuned from receiving love, knowing how that feels or giving love and knowing how that feels. Yeah. And then on top of that, how love can be shared. Well, most people want love shared with them. <laughs> they're not looking at how I can share love with others. Mm. They're looking at what can I do to get that person to love me yeah. and, you know, do what I want or do or do what I think I need, what love my love demands, which mm -hmm. is not love at all, but actually addiction. And, and so we need to see here that when we truly love, we desire to know these things about yes. love. And when our desire is sincere, now our conscience is going to be in tune with God's truth. Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. When I have a sincere desire to love, I desire to take loving actions, even when I do not yet understand love itself, or when there are seemingly little rewards for being loving. Mm. So have this um, overreaching desire that says, no, I'm going to do what's loving regardless. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes you can feel that and go, this is what I should do. It's a yeah. loving thing to do. And sometimes you don't even understand sometimes uh, that much why. Particularly a child will be in this connection with God. Yep. Where initially, if a child has a, has a conscience-based connection with God, they will have these feelings of, oh, I want to do what love is. But they haven't yet got a developed intellect to know what that is, really is. They just can naturally do it. You know? mm -hmm. So you, you often see children treating children of different races exactly the same way as they treat a child of the same race, yes. unless there is some kind of parental influence over that. Yeah. And why do they do that? Because their soul is automatically in the state where they want to love, yeah. and their soul is already getting indications from God that everyone's equal. Yes. And so they treat everyone equal. Yeah. And, 
even though they don't have not yet got an intellectual development to understand why they're treating each person equal. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's so far, it's so innocent that they don't even understand that everyone's different. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because the reality is everyone isn't. It's no. just a skin, skin tone and that's it, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, these are things that a child would do quite naturally. But as adults, obviously, we've got reasons why we don't. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. But when we have that desire, that's going to help us to hear our conscience. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Or hear God's truth. God saying, this is the truth about love. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when I have a sincere desire to love, I desire to remove my, from myself the reasons why my behavior is unloving. And even if that means I have to feel some painful emotions or means that people in my environment don't understand me anymore. Mm. Mm. So, so this is about going, okay, um, I've got a, this overreaching desire to love that's inside of me, but I also can see that there's quite a lot of emotions I have inside of me that are not very loving at all. Yeah. When I'm in this state of desiring to love, I go, right, these emotions are a problem. These mm -hmm. are ones that are, that are not loving. They're a problem. Mm -hmm. I need to take some sincere action. Yeah to address these emotions and get rid of them so they no longer guide me. Once you do that, you're naturally in more tune with God's truth about love. Yes. So naturally, you're going to be more in tune with the conscience mechanism. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And when I have a sincere desire to love, I automatically come into harmony with God and God's truth. And this makes it much easier for God to share the truth with me via the conscience. Mechanism. Yeah, so this is more of a summary now yeah. of what happens. Mm -hmm. Love now, well, now that I really desire to love, mm -hmm. my, my soul now is now more in tune with love and everything about love. Yeah. And now if there's things I don't know about love, God can share those things with me through the operation of my conscience. Mm -hmm. God shares his truth through the operation of the conscience. So now the truth about those things about love can be shared with me. Yeah. Before then, they could not be shared. Yeah. Right. I, 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 he might be attempting to share them. Yeah. But I'm not going to hear. I, I'm not sensitive enough to tune into what's being shared with me. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And so um, we've really identified in this brief section really what it, it looks like when you have a sincere desire to love because that's the kind of desire that we can develop and by developing that desire we automatically become more sensitive to the conscience mm. and do you do are you saying that we only become more sensitive to what the conscience is telling us in regards to love or do we become more sensitive to the conscience in regards to everything you know you said there's, there's yeah well that's, so much a, that's a very good so question that's yeah. a very good question but remember right at the beginning we said all of god's universe revolves around truth so all uh, revolves around love so all of the truth of the universe this is including the truth of physics and science and every truth you can imagine all has love injected into it mm -hmm. so therefore if i'm more in tune with love I now have also the ability to receive more truth about all of these other mm -hmm. things that are going on in the universe because they are also in more tune with love. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you could almost like, and I know some of the new age sort of terminologies are a bit off, but one is about vibration. You could say that when your soul is in the vibration, if you want to call it that, of yeah. love, yeah. now it's more in resonance with the vibrations of truth coming from God. Yep. Right. So it's about resonance. It's about agreement yeah. inside of us. The more disagreement we have emotionally inside of us about love with God. So in other words, I have an idea or concept of love that's not God's concept of love. So we're in disagreement. The more disagreement we have between myself and God, the more the chances are that I will not be able to be in tune with God's truth coming by the conscience anymore yep. because I'm completely disagreeing with what's coming. Yes. <laughs> I don't agree with any of it. I mean, sadly, I can't accept any of it because I don't agree. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And I don't want to. And I don't want to. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Thank yeah. you. <laughs>